Hello and welcome to the video for how do I use the save game object. I'm going to go ahead and run our example here and you'll see we have a health value, a take damage button, save game button, and load game button. When we hit the take damage, we go ahead and take a few points of health damage. Save and load do nothing now. That's what we're going to implement. Let's go ahead and get to it. So, save games. The save game object is basically a container. You can think of it like a bucket or a piece of paper, a clipboard, a box, something that simply holds things. Those things are going to be variables. Let's go ahead and start by right clicking, blueprint class. We need to search for save game and create a new object called save game. Let's name ours my save game and open it up. Now, by default, you'll see a blank normal blueprint screen. We want to ignore the event graph. You do not really want to put any events or anything special inside here. You simply want to use it, like I said, as a container to hold variables. So let's go ahead and create a few variables here. We'll create one called health, and we'll create one called name. I'll change the health over to an integer, and name over to a string, and hit compile. That is all we need to do. That's the bare minimum. The save game simply holds variables. Now we're going to go over here. We'll assign a few default values just for completeness sake and for another example later on. That's it. We'll close this down and we'll go into our example. Our example is a pretty simple user interface, a few buttons and some text. I've gone ahead and assigned some events to the buttons. And then when you take damage, all it does is take a health value variable and decrement it by 5. So, let's start with our save game. First thing we need is we need a save game object to actually work with. You can either create a save game object or you can load a game from a save game object. Since we don't have one, let's go ahead and create one to start with. So we're going to drag off and create a save game object and we need to assign it to the class we just created, my save game. Now that we have a save game object, we actually need to tell it it's a my save game object, our actual individual customized class. So let's go ahead and cast this to my save game, and there we go. You'll see if we drag off of here, and we type in health, well, nothing, because again, it is a generic save game class. It's not individualized. We needed it to be the my save game. And when we drag off, now we have health. Since we're saving, we want to set the health variable that is state that is stored inside of our my save game class. We're going to go ahead and assign it to the health value. We are working on locally here that we decrement by five. And that would be it. What we're doing is creating it, casting it to my save game, and setting the health value. Now, technically, it's not going to do anything because we're not actually saving the file. All we're doing is creating the object. So, this is pretty simple. We'll go ahead and save game to slot. Now, this is the important node right here. We have three things. The save game object itself, the slot name, and the user index. We'll start at the bottom. User index is optional. For the most part, you can keep it at zero. It's meant more as a way to identify things if you need to for multiplayer. Slot name. This is unique to each save game. You have multiple saves. Multiple slot names is what you should use. One save, one slot name. Let's go ahead and name it simply save slot to avoid confusion in the future. Keep in mind it is a string, so it is case sensitive. Save game object. Well, this is our created save game object, which is right here, that we actually want to save to file. So we can drag it over and connect it, or we could simply cast this to a local variable and then connect it. But for example, we're just going to go ahead and, you know, do this. So there we go. Now, actually, it will save it out when we click the save button. So if we run this, take some damage and hit save game, it saves. We'll go ahead and run it again. Well, we haven't hooked up load game yet, so nothing's going to happen. So let's go ahead and hook up load game. Load game is basically the exact opposite of this. Create a save game object, either from a file or new. Take the variable from the save game object, 
put it wherever you want. In our case, it's going to be locally in our health value. And then that's it. You're done. So let's go ahead and load game from slot. Now, again, user index, we'll keep it at zero. And slot name, well, let's make sure it matches the same. Save slot. Return value, well, we want to get our health, but again, this is a generic save game. So we need to cast it to my save game. And now that it's specific and it has our variables in it, we can get our health value. We'll take our health value and we'll go ahead and take the local health value and set it to our save health value and hook it up. And that should be it. We should now load the save game from the save file, cast it to our my save game, get the health out of it and assign it to our local health value. Let's see if this works. We'll go ahead and hit play and hit load game. And there we go. We'll go ahead and take a few more pieces of damage and we'll close it out. We'll hit play and we'll hit load game. And as you notice, it did not save it because, well, we didn't tell it to save it. So we'll take a few more points of damage, save the game, close, hit play, and load game. And there we go, health of 40. And that's it. That's all you need to do to save and load and use the save game object. Create a generic instance, cast it to your appropriate type, and then either get down here or set the appropriate value and then save it if you're going to save or assign it if you're going to load. That's it. Now as an example in here, let's say we want to load an, an existing one and save over it. Well, we could simply load game from slot, save slot, and now we've loaded up the existing file. Now anything that is unique in there that is not default will now be in our save game here. We need to cast it, of course, to the my save game. And now, for example, this one is going to contain the existing health and the existing name if we were to have changed them from the default. Now we don't need to create a save game object because we've already created it. We don't need to cast it because we've already created it. And then we do need to set, but there's an issue here. If we were to just simply do this and connect this up and run it, well, what would happen if we didn't have a save game? Well, that's when this cast would fail here. So if we hook this up here, create, move on and go, well, we're going to have another issue here. We can only hook up one save game. Well, we're going to run into issue. So here's the nice and simple thing to do. Let's go ahead and promote this to a variable. We'll name this one our local save instance. We will hook this up and don't worry about the wires right now. I will clean them up to make it a little bit easier here in a second. Let's disconnect everything and we'll hook this up here. So what we're doing here is loading it from a save slot if it exists. If it does, casting it to my save game. And if it exists, saving it as the local save instance. And then we're moving on from there. Now here, if it fails, we're going to create a new version of it, cast it to my save game. And then as you've seen what we already did before, we need to set the local save instance. For this version. Now you don't have to worry about this failing unless you've gone ahead and cast it to the wrong saved instance. This will always succeed and it will create our local save instance. And we'll go ahead and hook this up right here. So what we're doing is we're creating two versions, either a loaded save instance or a created save instance and then setting. So we need to hook up our save instance right here. Setting the health in the save instance, either the loaded from file or the brand new created one, and then saving out to slot, which again, we need to drag our load save instance in. And there we go. So what this does is this will either use an existing file or create a new file and properly set the new health and save it to disk. Using these two simple functions right here, these two clicks is all you need. Anytime you wish to save or load a variable inside any of your games.